inductors in a circuit. I mean, it's tough, but that doesn't mean that we can't do it, and we are. Okay, so let's just review really quickly. We want to look at, we want to model this situation. So you have a battery, an inductor, and a resistor. So what happens is when you close the switch, the current is going to increase in this inductor, and the inductor is basically like a big solenoid. I thought I had one. I don't. So that change in current produces a changing magnetic field that induces a EMF in the same coil, which makes the voltage increase compared to the change in current. So we can write the voltage across an inductor like this. The voltage across the inductor is negative L. L is the inductance. And then the rate of change of the current with respect to time. So if the current's constant, delta I, delta T is zero, then there's no voltage across it. It's just a wire. When I close that switch, I can't go from zero current to the I zero current. I zero current would be the steady state current. In this case, I zero is going to be equal to the EMF over R. It's just like that's not just a wire. It can't just go there instantly. It's got to take time because it can't change from zero to I zero in zero time. That's an infinite potential. So instead we get this charging circuit right here, this charging current right there. So this is how we could describe the current as a function of time. That's I zero. That's the number one. This is exponential negative T over tau where tau is the time constant L over R. And then when you open the circuit, the same thing happens. You can't change instantly, so it can't just turn off instantly. And we have this expression for the current as a function of time. So these are not easy to derive without calculus, so we're not going to. Instead, we're going to model those numerically in Python. Now, as uh, summaries for OpenStack physics, college algebra-based physics course, this wouldn't be something that you'd have to do. However, I think it gives a lot of insight into what's actually going on, so we're gonna do it anyway. I'm not gonna put it on the test, but it's super useful. Okay, and I did this before for an RC circuit, so we're gonna do an LR circuit. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we model the motion of this? How do we, or the current as a function of time? How do I get this whole thing? Well, I'm just gonna erase this. So we can start. We know what that is. I can rewrite that equation. Uh, and I want to go ahead and start with the loop rule. The loop rule says that as I go around a circuit, the total voltage has to be zero. Let's just write down that as an equation. So if I start from here to there, I have EMF, which is just the voltage across that battery. And then I'm going to go across the voltage of this, which is going to depend on the current. I'm going to write that as minus L delta I, delta T. And then I have the voltage across the resistor. Well, if the current's this way, it would be a, a voltage drop too. So I get minus I R, that completes the loop, so I'm back to zero. So that's my equation. I can't solve that, right? Because I depends on the change in I. So it's a really difficult situation. So what we're gonna do is to break the motion into small, the motion, it's not motion, it's time break the current into small time intervals, I'm going to use 0 0.001 seconds. During that short time interval, I can assume that I is constant. It's not, but I can assume that, right? Because it's a short time interval. So if I do that, I can take that constant I and use that to solve for delta I, the change in I during that time interval. So let's just algebraically solve this equation for delta I. I'm going to add that to both sides. L delta I over delta T is EMF minus IR. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by delta T and divide by L, and I get, can I put it right here? Delta I is going to be equal to delta T over L EMF minus IR. And what does that get us? Well, that tells us how the current changed during that time interval. Now when I go to the next time interval of 0 0.001 seconds, the next one, I can use the same idea, and I can use this delta I to find the new current. So I can say I2 is I1 plus delta I. So I can use that to find the new current, and then I can come back up here and do this again, right? Now I have a new current, so I'm going to have a new 
change in current, and then I just keep doing it again and again. So this is my, my step. Number one, uh, calculate delta i, update i, and now after that I'm going to uh, say t2 is t1 plus delta t, right? And then I do that. I just keep doing it over and over and over again. Now to do this, I need numerical values, right? I need to know what's the time interval, what's the, what's the inductance, what's the EMF, what's the resistance. So I just pick some values here. Uh, let's go with R equals 0 0.1 ohms, uh, L 0 0.1 Henry's, uh, EMF is 3 volts, uh, and then the initial, the initial current is 0. I of zero. I need to start with that, right? Once I calculate delta I, I have to add it to something the first time. So I'm going to have to do that. Okay, let's jump over to Python and model this in Python. And if you haven't done Python before, that's fine. I'm going to go uh, in as basic of a mode as I can. Uh, and I'll give you the code. So don't worry about that. Okay, here we are in Web v Python. Um, let's just get started. I need to make a graph. I want to make a graph of current as a function of time. So that's going to be a graph. Oops, that's not that over here. G1 equals graph. Uh, let's give it a X title of time in seconds. A Y title of I in amps. Now, I am going to also give the width and height of the graph because I'm zoomed in. So I'm going to put the width at 400 and the height at 200 just so it looks a little bit better. But that just makes the, uh, the axis for the, the graph. It doesn't actually make the graph. So I need to pick a function to plot. I'm going to call it F1. And it's going to be an object of type G curve. And I'm going to make the color of that curve blue, which you don't have to do. No, that's not right, blue. OK. Now I need to put my other constants in there. T equals 0. DT equals 0 0.001. I equals 0. L equals 0.1, R equals, you got to say it like that too when you type it, R equals 0.1, and then EMF is 3. Yeah, okay. Now I need to go through all those time intervals and calculate delta I. I need to calculate update I, update time. So I'm going to make a loop. We can make a loop in Python, uh, a while loop, while T is less than, let's run it for 5 seconds. Okay, so this is going to keep on doing everything that's tab indented below this until the variable t is no longer less than five seconds. So that means you better do something like this, t equals t plus dt. So if you don't update time, time will always be less than five seconds and you'll be stuck in an endless loop. It'd be like in that Superman show, that Superman movie where the uh, General Zod was trapped in that spinning mirror. It'd be like that, but in Python, and that's not cool. And if you haven't seen that movie, that's okay. Because it was like 1982 or something. It was the second one, I think. Okay. Anyway, I put that there so I wouldn't forget. Now what I'm going to do is to calculate my delta I on the board, which you cannot see because, let's see if I do this. I put my computer wrong. Okay, I'm going to calculate it. DI is going to be equal to DT times EMF minus I times R divided by L. Is that right? Yeah. I got it right. Okay. Now I'm going to use that to update i. i equals i plus di. And then that should be it, right? I'm going to keep changing my current. Now let's just plot the whole thing. Now you could put the plot before or after the time. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to put it after f1.plot ti. Let's run it. Okay. But is that the same thing? Right, that looks like the curve should look like it. The current's increasing up to some constant value of 30 volts or 30 amps. But let's actually check. Okay, let's just make a second curve. Uh, F2 equals G curve, color equals color dot red. Um, and then I'm going to plot the theoretical current. So down here, I'm going to calculate the theoretical current, IT. It's just going to be. Oh, well, I should put up here I0. I0 is going to be EMF over R, and I can plot uh, 
I can calculate it. It's going to be I0 times 1 minus exponent negative t over tau. I didn't calculate tau. Let's do that. Tau is the time constant. It's L over R, right? It was L over R. Yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And now I can plot that one too. F2 dot plot t i t. So that's the theoretical time. And that curve's red. And there you can see that they're right on top of each other. They agree exactly, pretty much exactly. Okay, so that's a pretty good numerical calculation. But wait, we can make it even better. Let's make it even better. Let's go back up here to the board. What would happen? What would happen if I added in my circuit, I took this apart, and then I put right here a capacitor, a resistor. C, R. Something weird's going to happen, right? Because we looked at an RC circuit where it, the current decreases the function time when I close the switch. It started off with a high current and then went zoop. And then if you have an inductor, it starts off with no current and increases. So what if you have both of those in there? Well, they want to do different things. The capacitor wants no current at DC things, and this wants no current at changing. This doesn't want a changing current. This doesn't want a constant current. So they fight each other. And they don't really fight. Okay. But what you get is something weird. Let's just, let's just do this, right? We don't really care. We can do this. We can just change our loop rule and just keep going. So here I need to think about one thing. What's the voltage across the capacitor? VC is going to be Q over C. And so I can add that in here. Let's start off with Q as a function of time. Q of zero is equal to zero. It starts off uncharged. In my loop rule, that means I just need to add over here minus Q over C. And so down here, when I solve this, I'm just going to have to modify this equation a little bit. So that was add that. Yeah, it's just minus Q over C equals zero. No, I've already solved that. Oh, I got to put a parenthesis right there. Okay, so that's not too hard. But as the current flows, the charge on the capacitor is going to change too. So I need to take that into account. I don't, I'm not just updating the current. I need to use the current to update the charge. Remember that I, can you see that? Yeah, I is delta Q over delta T. So delta Q is going to be I delta T. I just solved that for delta Q. Now that's the amount of charge I need to add to the capacitor each time. So down here I can just have a Q2 equals Q1 plus I delta T. So once I calculate I, I can use that to update the charge. And then that charge matters because it's over here. This shouldn't be too hard to change. Let's just add it into our calculation. Oh, I do need a value for the capacitance. I picked a 1, one farad. So I'm going to have a 1 farad capacitor. Uh, let's put that down here. C equals 1. Q equals 0. I, oh, I didn't even change. I'm sorry. I started just working away. I'm just so excited. Okay, so I added these two lines right here. Uh, C is equal to 1. Q is equal to 0. Because I need an uncharged initial value of the capacitance. Down here, I'm just going to modify this equation to add in the minus Q over C. That's the voltage across the capacitor. That didn't change that much. I'm still going to update the current. Now I'm going to update the charge. Oops. Q equals Q plus I times DT. That's it. Okay, let's get rid of this plot. I don't want to actually plot that second curve. So th in this case, I'm going to close the switch. It's going to have a capacitor, resistor, and inductor in there. Let's see what happens. Look at that. I mean, that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so you get this oscillation. And the frequency of the oscillation depends on both the, uh, the capacitance and the inductance. Uh, and the resistance technically it does. I, have, I put a very, very low resistance in there. And you'll notice that uh, the resistance makes it die down. What would happen if I put a zero resistor in there? Let's just do that just for fun. I'm going to multiply this by zero. And now it's just a complete oscillator. 
There's no loss in energy. This is the same thing as a damped harmonic oscillator. So if you have a mass on a spring with some force that makes it slow down, this, it's the same mathematical equation, which is kind of awesome. Let me just show you one more thing. <clears throat> it's, what if I didn't have a DC voltage source, but I had an AC voltage source? What if in my circuit I had some uh, voltage that varied with time? Well, I can do that. Uh, let's just pick, I'm not going to go into all the stuff. Let's pick omega equals 5. Okay, that's my angular velocity, my angular frequency for my voltage source. And I have to calculate EMF each time, right? Because it's going to change. So I can say EMF, and it's fine. I've already defined it, but I can change again. Times cosine omega times T. And that's, that's an, it's supposed to be an omega. So, oh, I think I have to put an equal sign. So that's it, right? Every time I go back and I calculate my new change in current, I just have a different voltage because the voltage is changing with time. Let's just run this and see what happens. So you get this weird thing, right? Because this is a damp driven harmonic oscillator. Same thing. Um, now, it turns out that you can play around with this as you want. Let's print out the, the fundamental frequency, which is not quite the fundamental frequency because it ignores the resistance. Uh, I'm going to print uh, 1 divided by the square root of L times C. This is the almost the fundamental frequency. It's not quite. And I get 3.16. So look here, I have a current of, what's that? 1 point or 12.3 amps. If I change this to uh, 3.16 for the frequency, now I'm driving the frequency at the same frequency, resonance frequency of the circuit. What is the current? Notice that it gets up really high. It gets up to you know 25, even maybe even higher as I let it go on. What if I have a super 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 high frequency though? What if I change this to uh, let's say 31? I'm just picking some numbers here. Now you'll notice that the current is very low, only one amp, and those are crazy numbers because of the numbers I picked. But uh, this circuit, let me go back to the, let me go back to my overhead thing. So this circuit, if I replace this with an AC source, we can find the resonant frequency of the source. The resonant frequency of the source depends on the inductor and the capacitor. This is how a radio works. A radio works by adjusting L and C. Uh, you could do one or the other until the combo gives you a frequency, resonance frequency of the radio station that you want to pick up. Otherwise, you'd pick up all the radio stations and you can uh, tune that circuit to that thing. So that's how a basic radio works. Uh, you should look at uh, crystal radios. They're really cool because they're very similar to this. You don't have a power source. There's just the power source would be the electromagnetic waves in the, from the radio station. You don't need a battery. But if you get it to resonate with that, that signal by adjusting the I think you adjust, you adjust, you adjust both the inductor and the capacitor. You can get it to work, and you can pick up a radio station. It's kind of cool. Okay, so that's that. Numerical models for LR circuits and LRC circuits, because we added the capacitor. The end.